legal status in Israel for humanitarian reasons. Many times in Israeli immigration law, you will hear this phrase, status in Israel for humanitarian reasons. But today I'm going to explain you a real life story that happened in our Israeli immigration office that will maybe shed further light on this issue of status in Israel for humanitarian reasons. So this is the story a few years ago. A client uh, came to me on the phone already. She said my application for a visa in Israel for humanitarian reasons was denied. I have 21 days to appeal. Would you look into the case? So I met her and I heard her story, which was quite unusual and I'll tell it to you now. So what was very usual is that like many Filipinos, she came to Israel to work as a caregiver. And uh, while she was here, she fell in love. She met an Israeli, they fell in love and they got married. They married outside of Israel. They came back and they started the application to grant her legal status in Israel as a wife that's married to an Israeli. And uh, like it happens many times, sometimes it's difficult to even start the process in these kinds of cases. The Israeli immigration is sort of suspicious of this relationship. But yes, they did. They collected all the documents. They proved they were really a couple. They started the process. Pretty much at the beginning, she became pregnant and she gave birth to a child. This son is also an Israeli. In some cases, you need to do a DNA test. The father needs to show that he's actually the biological father of the son, but the child was registered as an Israeli and they started the process. Usually such a process will take five years. And after five years, the foreign spouse, this woman could apply for Israeli citizenship. In this case, it took a little bit longer after, I think something like seven or eight years um, she was about to apply for citizenship, but the couple uh, split. They broke up. They filed for divorce. By this time, the child was already in the first grade in the Israeli public schools. But once the couple separates, then in terms of Israeli immigration law, this woman has no longer any reason to be here because the only reason she got legal status in Israel was because she was married to an Israeli. She's not uh, Jewish. She doesn't have any other type of visa. So once they split in these cases, she actually doesn't have the right to stay here. But as you can imagine, as the mother of an Israeli, the main uh, custodian, according to the divorce agreement, she was responsible for this uh, well-being of this Israeli son. So it's not like she can just be deported. And also the son sees the father. So in these kind of cases, basically the file is transferred to a humanitarian committee and they decide what uh, to do, whether to allow this uh, woman to stay in Israel with her son, which, who is Israeli, or to deny the visa application and then she can uh, leave. So when she came to me, if you remember, she would already deny it by the humanitarian committee. But what was unusual is that she waited for seven years. It's hard to believe even, but seven years she waited for the decision of the humanitarian committee. By the time the decision came, it was really literally two paragraphs, so it took them seven years to decide. They said, no, your application is denied and you have to uh, leave within 14 days and you have 21 days to appeal. This is very standard, but what wasn't standard is that you wait so long. So the humanitarian committee always takes time to make decisions. In this case, it was really, really a long time. So you can ask yourself, what, what visa did she get during all this time? Well, she did get a work visa. She got a B1 work visa, which was renewed year after year while she was waiting for the humanitarian committee to make the decision. So when I saw this, I thought, yes, we need to appeal. So you submit an eternal appeal, was rejected. Then we appealed 
to the immigration tribunal according to the law of entrance to Israel. And what you try to do in such appeals to the court, this is uh, the actually the immigration tribunal, you want to show that the child and the mother has as many connections as you can show to Israel. And this is their center of life. The child by now didn't have hardly any connection to his father, and this was one of the reasons that actually the application was denied, but he did have connection to his grandparents, to cousins, to um, also uncles and aunts, so you try to bring proof also from the school, from uh, friends, as many connections that both the mother and the child have to Israel to really establish that they cannot be deported to, to their home country because it would be really bad for the child and also the mother is really rooted and grounded in Israel. So we got to the immigration tribunal and the decision that was made was that the file would be transferred back to the humanitarian committee. So actually this is considered a success. It might be to you sound uh, strange, like why couldn't the judge there decide just to give status legal status in Israel to the mother, but this is rare actually, this is the truth, it's very rare that judges will make such decisive decisions, also judges don't have really a way to check the facts, so what they do is they, it was transferred back to the committee, then the local Ministry of Interior does interviews, you submit more documents, everything to establish that the mother and the child have a strong connection to Israel. We prepared a good application. We applied again. Again, it goes to the humanitarian committee. Again, you wait. Again, you start the waiting process of several years. And again, unfortunately, we got a negative decision. By this time, it's really hard to believe that we established and they've been here for so many years again was this actually rejected? Yes, it's rejected again. Again, you go to the appeal. But by now, if you make the calculations of all the years in Israel, Israeli kids, citizens, by the time they're 18, they need to be drafted to the military. So by now, he's already very close to the age he will be drafted to the military. This kid is a great kid. He's an outstanding student. He wants to join the military in Israel every Every girl and boy at the age of 18, unless there's something unusual, they join the army. And there is a special clause, a special procedure that grants the parents, foreign parents of Israeli citizens that have joined the IDF, legal status in Israel. So you can choose. Do you want to fight again through the humanitarian committee? Or maybe it's a better decision just to wait for 12 months after 12 months of enrollment in the IDF, if there's no problems, the son can apply and grant status for his mother and even in the future permanent status in Israel. So this is the story. It uh, may sound uh, very long and uh, difficult to understand, but also very important element is the element of time. If you see in immigration issues, like in life, there's many times the legal world and then there's what happens in real life and time is very important. So here you can understand and see how also the element of time is very important in immigration issues. By this time, the, uh, the son can very soon actually apply for his mother according to now a different procedure, which gives the mother a very good chance to stay in Israel, to keep close to her son, which she loves, and we were part of their story. And uh, Thank you for listening to my long story, and I hope you learned something. And as always, if you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to ask.